Hey guys, I did my project on the ethics of the methods of factory farming, uh, particularly animals that we mass produce in order to, uh, you know, feed the population with meat, um, dairy, eggs, you know, uh, anything that comes from an animal. Uh, this is as opposed to the uh, old fashioned methods of family farming where uh, family farms or local farms would um, feed the local people. Um, their ways of living were much different. You know, it was more natural, you know, grazing on uh, farms, uh, on the grass, or um, they had land to walk around on, sunshine. Um, and slaughter was more uh, concentrated on, as in... Um, in general, they would um, do it themselves. You know, there was more um, insurance that they that they would die quickly um, or as quickly as possible. Um, whereas opposed to factory farms, uh, some animals don't ever see the light of day in their lives. Um, they are usually slaughtered by machines, and it's not as accurate. Some of them. Uh, don't die immediately. Um, they might bleed out for a few hours um, without getting too graphic. It's not, um, it's more efficient numbers wise, but not, um, not really like paying attention to each individual animal and uh, the quality of how it was slaughtered or even raised. Um, and um, there's also, you know, uh, special breeding in order to fatten up cows or chickens or pigs um, in order to make more meat um, and so th these particular breeds cannot survive um, it, they're not the natural form you know that they used to be they cannot survive on their own they're um, they just can't uh, because of their different biology and anatomy they're um, all modified animals. So this is in order to make more product with a little bit less um, animals, even though there's hundreds of thousands of them. Um, so that's the two different sides. So um, meat eaters might argue that, um, you know, we've always eaten meat, we've always um, needed it. We need it for essential nutrients, you know, iron, zinc, calcium, vitamin D. Uh, we need meat and dairy products for certain nutrients. Um, and this is a combination of a poll that I took on my social media page as well as uh, research um, into different sources. And the most those are the most common arguments as well as some were uh, raised on a farm. They never really thought about the difference between farm-raised animals and factory-farmed animals. Um, they've always done it themselves. They, they just are familiar with the process. Um, some people have never even really thought about it because they've never been exposed to anything um, that they've never been exposed to the process in general. Um, you know, you never really think about it because um, we all just buy it from the store. You know, we don't have to think about it. So um, there's also the argument that um, we are anatomically designed to eat meat, but I could not find any studies that support that definitively, um, either and on either side, really. So, um, but there is a hypothesis from uh, I think it was Berkeley, and um, it proposed that the earliest humans uh, relied on plant sources for energy. Uh, primarily, and then out of um, a developing habit, they uh, would uh, kill kill for meat and protein, and um, they don't believe that there's any evidence um, that we did that due to how we are uh, anatomically designed. And so, uh, for vegetarians or vegans or Maybe even people who, you know, just like to limit meat, they might argue that um, 
but obviously the most common one is animal welfare and the rights of animals um, due to the process that they go through, you know, never seeing the light of day. It's they don't eat what they're supposed to instead of eating um, uh, grass or, you know, whatever they'll eat grains or um, drink contaminated water, you know, living in their feces, and uh, they have antibiotics and growth hormones pumped into their bodies and all that stuff. So um, there's that, you know, the low quality living conditions overall in general. And um, obviously uh, the environment is another really common argument, but also the fact that um, uh, the, so meat eaters might argue, argue that uh, vegans or vegetarians lack a lot of nutrients, but according to a lot of the studies that I found, meat eaters also um, lack the same or other uh, nutrients. So um, there's kind of the argument for each side is sort of invalid because in any diet, according to the research I found, everyone is lacking in some a nutrient and most often um, they are either side is lacking it is still taking under the recommended daily intake of most nutrients so um, researchers concluded that you know the whole the general public uh, does need more uh, education on the nutrients and um, you know health overall in regards to the foods that we eat so, um, uh, oh yeah, and then in defense for uh, meat eaters, the FDA recent, I think it was last year, they declared red meat as a carcinogen, and there are some studies that support uh, that, you know, it might increase the risk um, of, like, colon cancer is the most common one, uh, if you eat a lot of meat long term, but, um, I have also seen a couple studies and uh, reviews that said that there were a lot of methodological um, issues and contradictions in these studies um, that don't have sufficient evidence that red meat does cause cancer, but it's still a potential, though the risk is pretty low if you're going to relate it directly to eating red meat. Um, so, I wanted to go over some, uh, the studies that, uh, in support of vegetarian or mostly plant-based eaters, um, they, it not only, um, did they have, you know, a relatively, uh, sufficient amount of nutrients, um, co in comparison to meat eaters, you know, they're, they're about the same, um, they, uh, in regards to disease, there's actually um, a lot of evidence that uh, eating a more plant-based diet and less meat uh, has helped people with type 2 diabetes actually reverse it and um, dull it down. So, um, let's see, the um, in one particular study, um, a, there was an 82% decrease in the symptoms of people um, with type 2 diabetes, and 43% of those people uh, could lower their medications drastically for type 2 diabetes after eating a mostly plant-based diet. And um, so I, you know, that's generally uh, the, the two most common uh benefits in the research that I found for a vegetarian diet. Um, so, um, I wanted to give some facts on how, okay, so researchers overall, um, there's not much evidence or research that supports that, um, eating meat is really good for the environment at all. In fact, um, most of the research I found was, um, that meat diets are extremely bad for the environment, um. And, well, honestly, uh, even plant-based diets, they use a lot of resources, they use a lot of water, um, both diets, because of such um, the drastic growth in population over time that, you know, it's not going to, it's 
gonna keep explode it's not gonna slow down at all and so the ways in which we produce our food um, both for plant-based eaters and meat eaters is highly unsustainable and um, so um, about 80% of the fresh water in the US is used for food production in general for both meat and plant-based uh, foods uh, and you know that's ridiculous and unsustainable if you ask me but um and some more facts uh the u.s livestock population consumes more than seven times as much grain as is consumed by the american population so um the amount of animals that we are producing just to feed people is taking away from our own resources that we could have um you know otherwise uh use more uh, s sustainably in order to feed ourselves. We are um, sort of wasting our resources to make meat products when we could have those products for ourselves directly. Um, and, <coughs> excuse me, there's also a study that, um, no, there's not a study, there's many studies um, in which um, people interviewed people um, that, um, there was a direct correlation between those who cared about animal welfare and um, ate less or no meat and dairy products um, who had either exposure or education to how the factory farming system is. So, um, excuse me, my opinion is that um, if it's easy to ignore this issue if you don't see it directly with your eyes, if you don't you know, if you're living your everyday life just fine, you know, you go to the grocery store, grab some meat, you know, it's easy to ignore the issue or to not care. So, um, uh, researchers definitely found that there was a correlation between um, people who took action against this um, and, you know, in regards to the education and exposure. So, um, uh, <clears throat> like I said, according to all the studies, uh, um, a majority of them agree that the environment and population growth like that it's it's like the biggest issue with uh, food production in general so um, I watched this documentary re uh, that came out this year it's called uh, two degrees the point of no return and it basically summarized what um, all the studies are saying that um, we, I think we have passed the two degree point now. It's 400 parts per million um, for greenhouse emissions. So we have definitely passed that point. And what that means is that um, there's not really a way, anything that we can do now to reverse the impact of global warming. So all these natural disasters, these... Um, you know, we've never had three major hurricanes in one season. Um, so, in, like, we've never had that before. And so it's events like this, earthquakes, wildfires, um, unfortunately, it's going to keep happening because it's kind of breaking that point has triggered sort of a domino effect and um, things are only going to get worse. <clears throat> so... I think the biggest thing right now, um, ethically, morally, um, whether or not you eat meat or, you know, what other, whether or not you're opposed to it, the way in which we produce food is not sustainable. And so that's basically the bottom line. Um, so <clears throat> in regards to the environment, um, this is just a small sample. It was between 2004 and 2005. To give you um, some sort of perspective that nearly 3 million acres of the rainforest in just the Amazon were cleared purely for the purpose of um, growing crops to feed animals. Um, and in the United States alone, 260 million acres of forest land has been replaced with um, cropland for these animals, for factory farm animals. And um, so Obviously, greenhouse gases are at an all-time high. Um, over 51% of global greenhouse emissions are produced purely from animal agriculture. So, um, besides...
besides the factories themselves, um, cows manure um, produce methane gas, and that is 20 times mo more potent than carbon dioxide. So um, given the amount of livestock that we have, um, you know, we're just accelerating um, the, the greenhouse gas emissions and, you know, not to mention the uh, factories themselves run on, you know, fossil fuels and um, all these, <clears throat> excuse me, unsustainable resources. So um, that is basically like the whole reason. I think the bottom line is just environment um, when it comes to the ethics of factory farming. Uh, it's hard to um, create a solid argument, you know, for animal welfare, um, cause that can come down to people's religious beliefs, you know, do animals have souls? Like, does it really matter? And so, um, it's really hard to solidify, um, either argument. So I think it basically just comes down to the environment and the way in which we produce, um, our food. And thank you for listening.